Hey, well, uh, good morning to you. According to what I am hearing and seeing, we are live here on uh, Facebook, and this is the Trade Show Guy Monday Morning Coffee. And uh, hey, thanks for um, joining me this morning. Uh, this is actually going to be fairly short because, well, I'll explain here in just a second. <laughs> Uh, it, it's been a great weekend. I hope you had a good weekend. I ended up uh, skiing another day, which was fun. I went up to Timberline up at the top of Mount Hood. Not the top, but close to the top. Um, gorgeous up there. What a great day. Although, you know, I'm used to skiing more challenging runs. It's pretty tame up there, to be honest. For me, I mean, I've been skiing for, what, 50 plus years since I was a wee sprite. And, uh, oh, hang on, hang on. I got to introduce you to, to uh, Scruffy here. This is Scruffy. He's a new addition to our our family, and since I'm in the home office, uh, he gets to come in and say hi. So, uh, like I said, this will be fairly short. Um, maybe I can aim this just a little bit better so that oh, there we go. Okay. Uh, we did an interview. I did an interview last week with uh, John Halverson of Trans Group uh, Global Logistics because uh, I wanted to talk to him. We've been trying to set this up for a while. We finally got it to work last. Uh, I think Thursday or Friday or middle of last week, something. And, and, and I'm going to include that in the video playback version of this. The reason I'm not playing it here now is because no matter what I've done, I can't figure out how to get this to play a, a live, or I should say a recorded video to play live on Facebook. I've seen a couple of softwares. I've experimented with it. Uh, I don't know enough to do, to do that yet. Hopefully, yes. Um, and I'm still trying to work out the uh, challenge of getting a, a live guest on, but nonetheless, this will show up. I mean, I'm just the Facebook part is just kind of the the fun. I'm here live. Let's do this. Don't forget to join me uh, on the blog when this uh, whole thing is produced and that sort of thing. So, uh, this is Tim Patterson, and this is uh, Monday Morning Coffee on Facebook. It's also on a podcast. It's also on a vlog, which will show up on the uh, like I say the blog here very shortly. Uh, in any event, whether you're joining me live or whether you're viewing this later thanks for joining me here at uh, trade show guy blog i'm founder and uh, owner of uh, trade show guy exhibits a company that works with clients who are looking to upgrade their exhibit presence increase their trade show marketing return on investment and make a bigger splash at the shows where they exhibit it's been uh, a fun year or two of doing this and, and seeing business i mean i've been doing this for almost six years with this company and 15 for uh the in, in the industry but the last couple of years have been just getting more fun and and getting more clients, and, and it seems to be uh, one of those things which is it's getting better and better all the time, so that's kind of cool. Plus, Scruffy. <laughs> you can find us online at TradeShowGuyExhibits.com. The blog is TradeShowGuyBlog.com. Uh, if you want to get a free digital copy of my book, you can do that at TradeShowSuccessBook.com. Uh, you can go and get a, a Trade Show Exhibit Buyer's Kit, if you're interested in buying a kit, or buy, buying a booth, there is a little uh, kind of a, a, a walkthrough on how that whole work thing works, which is, I think, very good information. TradeshowExhibitBuyersKit.com. And what else do we have? Oh, you can sign up for ongoing webinars, um, like the reminders of this and whatnot at TradeshowGuyWebinars.com. So as I mentioned, this morning, a pre-recorded interview with John Halverson of Trans Group Global Logistics. We dig into the nuts and bolts, the ins and outs, the ups and downs of trade show shipping and logistics uh the interview recorded last week so i'm speaking with john halverson at trans group global logistics and we're going to talk about what it takes to ship and trade show stuff and all that stuff that people run into that they don't know what they're doing did i get all that right john is that the name of the group and everything uh that is correct excellent Where's so uh how long have you been with trans group uh 17 years with trans group and in the business for 27 years Wow. So it sounds like you probably have a lot of experience in uh, doing what you're doing, I'm guessing. Well, sure. That'd be, <laughs> yes. I, I one think, way to look at it. Huh? Yeah. Definitely. So uh, when it comes to, and, and I run into this with clients all the time, to ship something, they a lot of them don't really know where to turn to. And when they do uh, work with a shipper, they really don't know what goes on there. So maybe kind of a, a, a top view, a, a 30,000 foot view of what they're getting into when they are shipping trade show crates to, to a show across the country? Well, we ship all types of commodities. Um, one of the things we do is trade show freight domestically uh, for the most part, but uh, unlike other freight, you know, uh, apparel, books, printed material, um, the urgency of trade show freight kind of takes uh takes on a new, you know, uh, importance. 
uh, there's deadlines to meet, there's uh, cutoffs to make, drivers need to check in by certain times, show starts, and if you don't have your freight, what could be worse, right? Um, so it's 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 definitely something we, we have to babysit more than other types of freight that we handle. Uh, what kind of things should they know uh, as far as deadlines, timeframes, uh, what kind of questions are they asking and maybe what kind of questions are they not asking? So I think the most important thing about trade show freight is communication and being ahead of it because the schedule creeps up on you really quick and by and large, a lot of trade show materials are big crates, crates that don't fit on some aircraft. So you're often trucking these commodities. Um, and if you're trucking and you're going across country, you know, here we're here in Portland, uh, if you've got trade show in Florida or New York or, uh, you know, Chicago or anywhere else, uh, you know, you've got to keep it on schedule, right? You got to keep it, the more, the closer you get to the date, the more expensive it gets. So the, the farther out you plan and the better you plan and communicate with your forwarder, the more success and so when a client comes to you, let's say uh, I have a client in Portland that's going to be going to a show in New York City. This actually is the case uh, for a client, uh, and the show is at the end of June. It's like the last week of June. We know that they've got an advanced warehouse date that is probably, you know, there's a cutoff date maybe a week or so before the show, roughly. I don't have the dates in front of me, but uh, some of the things that they're going to come in run into is, is when should I call the shipper to schedule this stuff? Uh, and, and when should we, you know, be ahead of the game, as you say? So if you're going to advanced warehouse, which is always, uh, you know, uh, or I shouldn't say always advantageous, but certainly uh, you might experience uh less handling and drayage fees from the decorator or less waiting time at a particular live event uh, delivery. Um, that's, that's the safe bet going to advanced warehouse. And then uh, in this type of scenario you're, you're mentioning shipping in New York, uh, you know, you want to allow yourself certainly eight to 10 days, right? Calendar days um, to ship it, you know, get it picked up and get it moving. You know, again, if if you're if you're going to advance warehouse, then you've got extra time, and you always have a, as a backup and as a plan B, you can always deliver direct to the show. But if you're going direct to show, then it's even more important that you're you know calling at least you know a week ahead to make sure that you're you know you might be able to still utilize an economical uh, method of shipping as opposed to, you know, all cargo aircraft and things that you get into when you, you know, let a couple days get away from you and then all of a sudden you've got a deadline at a live event. Um, that's the that's kind of the worst case scenario um, when you're trying to put large crates um, onto all cargo aircraft. A lot of the planes we have flying out of Portland, especially our narrow body aircraft, they're very limited on the size of the materials they can take and the weight limits are maxing out at 350 pounds per piece. And what we see with a lot of trade show materials is, you know, 100 inch long crates, 55 wide, 35 high, 1200 pounds. You know, you, there's only three aircraft that fly out of Portland that can handle that particular type of freight. So you wanna call a week ahead and get it on a truck. Um, you know, and we, we offer expedited trucking services. So it obviously needs. sounds like it was going to cost more to the, the longer you wait. And if it has to go on a plane and they can put it on a plane, then that's probably the most expensive way to do it. Is that correct? For sure. Yeah. And it can be uh, dramatic differences in costs uh, when you're talking about all cargo aircraft versus, uh, you know, you got your at the very low end and not always the most economical, but thought to be that way is LTL trucking, what they call less than truckload trucking. And these are the trucks you see on the freeway every day when you drive to and from work, long 53 footers full of uh, cargo going all over our country. Um, but those trucks are very slow. They make lots of stops on the way. So lots of handling also is involved with that, that type of trucking. So we don't necessarily 
uh, promote or recommend LTL trucking for what we consider and, and refer to as time sensitive materials. And trade show freight is always time sensitive in one form or another. So we offer kind of an in-between. Uh, it's expedited uh, ground trucking. And then of course we have a whole menu of other options. But as you mentioned, when you start talking about air freight, you do start talking about higher pricing. So other than the, the time th- issue, is there anything else that drives up the cost? You mentioned handling. I'm just curious if there are uh, fees that you get into. I, cer- I know certainly when you get into a show, I think we had a, a client that went through you guys to Expo West last uh, month. It would have been uh, in, in early March. Uh, that they actually waited uh, to get in there and there was some time uh, cost there of them waiting for several hours just because there were so many people going in and out of that show. Uh, those It sounds like that's almost unanticipated. You can't really control that. Well, so if you're going live to an event, um, typically, you know, it'll depend on the venue. You know, we see trade shows at hotels. We see trade shows at, uh, you know, some of the larger Vegas hotel style Uh, resorts, and then you have actual convention centers. Uh, Convention centers typically will have some amount of waiting time, whether it could be an hour for a smaller show to, you know, in the worst case scenarios, uh, going to Javits or Moscone or McCormick Place. Um, You know, we've seen situations where uh, you check in at 8 a.m. and, you know, you don't get called over to unload until you know 5 p.m 6 p.m so uh waiting time is a factor at live events depends on the size of the show how many trucks are checking in for delivery um and the management whether it's freeman ges viper you know uh fern um these these management companies depending on how well they're organized and prepared for their particular show that you know, will also reflect back on how much waiting time you might experience at a show. So when a, when a client uh, is at the show and they're ready to ship their stuff back, uh, what kind of tips can you give someone that's in that position that is using uh, a shipper that may be some, you know, like you guys, for instance, versus what the show services might arrange and what kind of issues will they come up with? What kind of questions should they ask? What, what should they be aware of? So our, our place in the market is really to be uh, – uh, the most important thing for us is to be competitive. Um, that should be the easy part, um, uh, the dollars spent. So our job is to find the most efficient ways to move your freight that and, and offer you resources that you couldn't possibly uh, probably have at your, uh, if you were to work directly because, you know, we represent hundreds and hundreds of companies doing trade show freight all throughout the year where you may be an exhibitor that ships between, you know, maybe one show a year we have customers. Uh, Certainly they don't have the resources or vendors that are going to offer them the pricing that we can bring together Um, in regard to uh, when we deliver a show or when we pick up a show, typically we are there to pick up more than just your booth. So you will experience uh, an opportunity to share waiting time and have it be prorated as opposed to bearing all that on your own. Uh, when you deal with decorators, they offer, sh- you know, they offer freight services. Um, we see that they farm their freight services out to third parties. Some of those companies are good companies. Uh, in fact, we actually have uh, in a couple of parts of the country, we have decorators actually uh, use our company to facilitate to facilitate their uh, direct freight uh, contracts that they have with some of the exhibitors. But what we see normally is that if you were to uh, have it sent through a decorator, Fern, Freeman, GES, for the most part, they will not be as competitive in pricing area in returning that freight to your company than we will. Uh, We see that on a pretty regular basis. And, And sometimes, Depending on the uh, the situation, the freight charges can be substantially higher. 
So just basically, it sounds like you really need to be aware of what you're getting into when you do ship and go. Because a lot of the issues that come up with um, clients that I work with, they're they're moving out of their comfort zone because they've got a bigger booth than they had last year. And so they're shipping a a large wooden crate versus some stuff that they can ship with uh, uh, UPS or something, which is almost not necessarily a carry on, but certainly something they can check, you know, on on an airplane or they can ship a UPS and it'll show up. It's just a, a, a higher bar for them to try and figure out this stuff. And so uh, a lot of them don't know where to turn. So if they find someone like you that they can call and, and ask questions, uh, you know, let's say their show is, is the last week of June. When should they be talking to you? How many weeks ahead of time? So we have customers. I mean, we, so the way, you know, our, our everyday experience is goes from customers who give us a schedule in January for all their trade shows that year. And then we go to the extremes where, I mean, just today, we have customers calling us with emergencies that they either forgot to put on a truck a week ago or something just came up, a just-in-time order, a next slide out, what we call. So we deal with all, you know, all the various urgencies from last second, literally, to, you know, uh, you know, stuff that we've been discussing for three months in advance. We quote a lot of freight uh, based on their, you know, proposed uh, trade show schedule for the year because a lot of these marketing departments they have to work on a budget and so they have to submit their budgets to their bosses to get approval to how many shows they're going to attend that year and part of that is quoting us on the freight uh, which is a you know the freight is a substantial part uh, of the experience you know uh, trade shows are not cheap um, but uh, again communicating out in front uh, you know, being prepared for dates and cutoffs and pickup dates uh, is, is just always the most helpful to the customer, to the end user. It's, it's always going to be better for them to let us know at their earliest convenience rather than, you know, the last right. So So planning actually a year out is, is if you know you're going to go at those shows, that would be uh, one way to look at well, it. Well, I mean, that's, that's an extreme gotcha. situation. I'd say out of a, you know, out of a hundred trade show customers we work with, uh, in, you know, just in our office, I would say that, you know, five of them give us these schedules a year, you know, in advance. Um, but a lot of them will talk to us, you know, they'll quote the freight a month ahead and then we'll kind of, they'll ask us, when do we need to ship? This happens every day. When, when is the last day we can ship to still get what we call deferred pricing or economical pricing? And that's what we will advise them. And then we try to keep them, you know, on a, on a reminder type schedule to make sure that, you know, the day before, hey, are we still good on this pickup tomorrow? And, and hopefully we are. And then we, you know, we slot it right in for, uh, for the best, you know, type of pricing with the most comfort level for them. You know, not, not going to be their last minute. We'll try to build in one day at least of, of a cushion for them so everyone's comfortable with the experience. I had one last thought and then maybe one final question before we wrap this up, uh, John, and that is uh, there are certainly some some uh, shippers out there that kind of advertise themselves as special handling for trade shows and whatnot. Is that, uh, other than the time-sensitive issue, is there something beyond that that they're uh, offering? I'm just curious. Well, there's no one really reinventing the wheel. I mean, freight's going to involve a truck, a plane, a train, a boat, um, and these methods, you know, these modes of transportation are fairly static. The, you're, you're not seeing, uh, you know, we, there are things on the horizon that are going to potentially offer customers uh, unusual options. You know, we hear about Uber, you know, for freight, um, you know, but by those things actually coming to fruition and being some, you know, a, a method that you could trust, you um, that will remain to be seen how far off in the future that That's could true. be. That's true, and we're still not uh, uh, that close to the transporter yet. So, <laughs> Yeah, there's no transporter. But, yeah, I mean, these companies, you know, some companies do say they specialize. I mean, of course, I'd be, I'd be silly to say that we don't specialize in trade show freight. Um, but honestly, you know, we, we, we handle many commodities, different uh, types of, uh, you know, uh, markets, um, from apparel to auto parts to printed material to U.S. mail, um, and trade show freight is one of the very highest levels, along with say perishable foods that we really handle. And so it takes 
a lot more uh, due diligence. It takes more uh, over, you know, paying attention to the cutoffs, the dates, because all these things play into whether, you know, that trade show is going to be successful for the customer. So uh, it just an added layer of attention that that type of freight uh, demands to make it successful for people. So, you know, anyone can say they're a trade show expert, but um, it's really just comes down to the individuals handling your account or your, your business, whether, you know, how much they care and, and, and that would usually reflects in the services that you get. So it's, uh, it's, uh, you know, you got to prove yourself every time you handle a customer's freight. And I would presume that, uh, that uh, in the winter, you guys have to be aware of weather across the country as well, because that may impact deliveries. For sure. I mean, this year was a great example here in Portland. I mean, uh, we had several ice days where, uh, you know, it's funny you mentioned that, uh, uh, that, you know, people see the big roads, the freeways, Hey, there's people moving out there. But the tough part about those difficult days is, actually the parking lots where the pickups are at and the parking lot where the delivery is at. It's actually getting in it because those areas are packed with snow or or ice. They're not serviced by the city or a municipality. They're not getting sanded, you know, only if the, the, the owner of those properties takes, you know, attention to those, you know, private properties, are you going to get a truck to a dock door? So you could get nine, nine miles, you know, and still, and only have, you know, a block to go, but it's that last block. That's the part that you can't get past with the weather. So it's weather's just, you know, from ice to snow to, you know, we've seen uh, a lot of hot, you know, with aircraft, you get a lot of high wind uh, issues at some airports that delay flights. So weather's always something we're keeping an eye on. And we have a, you know, with monitors here in our office that uh, we're always got the weather channel on and, especially during the winter, uh, because weather, you know, could be great here for everybody. It's great in Florida, (laughs) but, you know, they ship their freight out of Florida and it's always going somewhere else. So, you know, you never know what's happening on the other end and in between when you're talking about truck freight. So, you know, it may be great here in Portland. It may be awesome in Chicago, but Wyoming's got a, you know, a sheet of ice across the freeway and the the DOT shuts it down. So no truck freight is moving that day. So, always a factor with weather. No doubt. Well, uh, any final words or, or things that we missed before we we uh, close this out, John? Well, we, we could probably talk about freight for <laughs> hours, right? Never really cover it all, but uh, certainly, you know, communication is key. Uh, working with a, you know, a provider, a forwarder like us that you can trust um, and, you know, just uh, planning ahead is the way to save money and, you know, make your boss happy, you know, for both you and me. So it's uh, communication is always the key, right. really. John from uh, Transgroup uh, Global Logistics, I really appreciate you spending some time and uh, thank you very much. You bet, Tim. I do want to mention one more thing before I get out of here is that um, the one good thing. I was kind of looking for a one good thing and oddly enough, I don't have it in here, but uh up until recently, I've, I've never had prescription sunglasses. And as you get older, your eyes, the muscles get weak. And I got prescription a new pair of prescription sunglasses lately. And I thought, well, that's a good thing. That's one good thing. Uh, it's <laughs> it's kind of a, a, a minor silly thing. But I think the one good thing that I've got uh, that I'm just going to share is, is prescription sunglasses. And that's a lot of fun. So, And here's the other good thing. This is Scruffy. He's such a great addition to the family. And he's quiet. He's very well behaved. He's about four or five years old, and uh, he was actually the result of a puppy mill in California from over here. Uh, ended up in a rescue dog house here in the Salem area, and my wife uh, was looking for a dog and tracked him down. And we were out for a walk yesterday. We took a three-and-a-half-mile walk on a beautiful sunny day in Salem, and, and, and I think three people said to him, Oh, such an adorable dog. Yeah, he's pretty cute. Have yourself a great week. And be sure and tune in uh, and get the whole thing, the the, the live podcast, or the, the recorded podcast and the recorded blog version on the website. Have yourself a great one. Thanks.